guy running will lock me. The guy run, my friend, but they're gonna catch him. You see that, my friend? They're gonna go, they're gonna go get him. They're gonna go get him, my friend. What's up, fam? It's your boy Jameer here, purveyor of all sounds underground. Thank you, local and international purveyors, for joining me on this YouTube Thursday, where today I will be sharing my coveted secret of my master chain journey from hardware to Logic 9 to Logic Pro X today. It's an astounding topic. If you got time for it, buckle up and get ready but before I jump into the details what I need is that SLC from y'all subscribe like comment and most importantly hit that notifications bell to stay in tune with the different things we got coming for you peace all right so here we are my coveted mastering chain and the journey that I've been on I think uh, before I dive into what I used to do for logic 9 uh, or within Logic 9 in terms of the master chain. Uh, my start was very much more hardware. Um, you know, using the DBX60 was pretty much the most compression I would have on my mastering chain and no limiters. It was just straight gear through a mixing board and onto my Roland, I think it's called a VS1880 and Cubase would dump each instrument so I'd literally if I had like 20 instruments I'd have to run Cubase uh, you know at least five to six times to make sure all of the instruments recorded and then mix it down and there but the most that I had was you know the DBX60 com compressor uh, compressor um, to just fatten things up a little bit and warm it up and then, lo and behold, we move on to the digital age, where uh, in programs or DAWs like Logic, you can have access to all these different types of compressors and different emulators and EQs to um, help enhance your sound. And I definitely can say uh, I had a lot of ignorance back then because I just got overtly excited by all of the available tools and I threw them on my master chain. And in this particular case, I read an article in Music Tech about Chocolate Puma's um, mastering chain. And I, you know, I looked at it to understand it as best as possible and mimicked where I could and put my own touches to it. But this was my mastering chain. And definitely, it's a lot more uh, in terms of things that I'd have on this channel versus what I now do today and I'll show you that in a bit in Logic Pro X. So first off, the first thing to hit the you know the master chain um, was the EQ. It was odd but I understood it at the time. Shave out about 30 Hertz um, and then drop the decibels down a bit overall here because I knew later in the chain I'd be boosting it and I'd shave off a bit at the end. And the reason for the, the deep cuts on the low and the highs at the time were, again, just the whole principle of, of multiple instruments um, stacking up and just making sure that the track could breathe. Uh, at least that was my logic. Um, so I thought this made absolute sense at the time and then I put on the multipressor which is you know uh, another form of compression but it, it is uh, zoned to specific areas in the frequency spectrum so you can see here at four different zones zone one dealt with frequencies at 20 Hertz or lower zone two uh, dealt, dealt with frequencies at 21 hertz to 50 hertz and zone 3 50 to 100 and then uh, uh, zone 4 dealt with the rest of the spectrum and you can see I did some more um, uh, threshold cuts here like depending on the zone and I treated them accordingly and then lo and behold I moved into more compression to give me that warm analog sound you know and and no uh, disrespect to PSP vintage warmer it's a great plugin um, but I definitely use this in the wrong way 
my my thought was to create some form of tape uh, saturation and, and emulation here. So I put this on here, not much going on. I didn't really boost too much in the overall drive. I left it flat at zero. And um, I made some adjustments to the low and high end, but not too much, just a very gentle uh, emulation of track tape. So there you have it. And then the next one that was up is the channel EQ. So uh, by this time, the thought was uh, there's a lot going on in terms of processing. I need to make sure that I maintain these cuts in the low end at 30 hertz and on the high end. And then I just did a slight boost overall in the remainder of the frequency. So when I look at it in relation to the first EQ that hit the, you know, the master chain, I basically boosted back whatever I took away at the top. So my logic at that time uh, to me is just off. And then I came back with more compression. Um, and this is mastering, uh, a mastering setting in the PSP Vintage Warmer. And the biggest mistake I made at the time in my master chain was using an adaptive limiter. Any sort of limiting on your master chain is not, it's actually quite unfair to the mastering engineer. Aside from all of the processing bullshit I've done here, way back in time in Logic 9, um, you're really limiting the mastering engineer to do what they need to do is, uh, in terms of making your project sound as best as possible. So, you know, my thinking today is less is more, and this is just way, way, way too much processing. And the irony about it is, is my mastering chain now, I'm moving back towards that less is more philosophy. And it also kind of brings me back home to where I started out when I had a lot more hardware, which was just a little bit of DBX60 compression. And I hardly touched the thing, no limiters anywhere. And uh, I mixed it down in the Roland VS1880 or any other uh, mix board I had. I think I had a Behringer mix board at that time before I sold everything, got divorced, and <laughs> stayed away from music for 10 years. But I digress. Point is here, this is just way too much going on. And the other thing that I believe affected this mastering chain materially is, like, look at this particular project. I left, like, absolutely no real headroom. So in my uh, templates today, you'll see in a minute, I have a minimum of minus 6 dB right across the board, all channels. And um, and because I was doing this stuff, like only minus 1 or minus 5 and the rare occasion, 18 here, but most of the time very close to zero, leaving pretty much no headroom by the time it hit the mastering uh, the master chain here. So when we look back at this first EQ, this is what that was doing. It was just trying to compensate for the fact that I didn't create any headroom. So I took it down anywhere between 5 and 10 dB only to boost it back up later on in, in the chain, which is ridiculous. So anyway, let's move on to the philosophy of why less is more is better.